Hey guys, it's Helen with Eyes on the Game, and I'm very excited because right now I am in California, and I'm joined by MMA NFL specialty high performance coach, <laughs> John Walker. You worked with so many talented athletes from NFL players to UFC fighters. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Um, well, for starters, I had the wonderful opportunity of playing in, in the NFL myself. Um, I am a UFC, USC graduate, so that's the University of Southern California. And um, gosh, there we won two national championships under Coach Pete Carroll. I know you guys uh, probably know who he is. He's currently the head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. So I, I do have an extensive background in, in football. Um, however, Football was more my means of education and, and kind of giving me the platform to further pursue my academic endeavors um, through my athleticism, right? But my number one passion has always been martial arts. Uh, ever since I was a little dude, I wanted to be a ninja, right? So MMA has really created a great platform for, I think, those types of people like myself who have a controlled sense of violence, uh, I guess. Um, it's given us an outlet, and now I get to share that with, um, with some of the wonderful athletes that I work with now. So when you were training um, as an NFL player, did you also practice mixed martial arts, or was that something you took on after? I did. Uh, I did as much as I could uh, because, again, my, my NFL, my NFL team was in Houston, and I played for the Houston Texans, uh, but all of my coaches that I knew of were in Southern California, so I did not really have an opportunity to continue my uh, martial arts progression when I was focusing on football, per se, but I've always, I've always been well-versed, and I've always studied, and, and most certainly uh, been a fan, and I've tried my best to recall the things that my instructors used to teach me uh, before I left and, and uh, my wife and I moved to Houston. Now, right now, for example, you're training uh, Tony Ferguson, Calvin Gastelum, Uriah Hall, now someone who has a fight lined up, Calvin Gastelum, fighting former UFC welterweight champion Johnny Hendricks. Um, what changes are you going to make with him? going into the big card, UFC 200. Yes, that's a huge card. Yes. And uh, Kelvin literally, he literally did like a samba when he found <laughs> out that he got to fight someone. How, how did he find out? Uh, you know what? He, he, got a, he got a phone call and it was just a name and a question mark uh, from the matchmakers. And he's like, wait, what? You're kidding, <laughs> what? And just, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, from at least from what it was was expressed to me. And then he called um, you first. And then he let me know. No, he actually didn't call me. He texted me and he said, "Coach, exciting news." And he was out of state at the time. Actually, he was out of the country at the wow. time. He got back to the U.S. We worked out the next day. He got back, and uh, we were on the treadmill. And normally he doesn't love to run on the treadmill, <laughs> but with this particular day he was bouncing on the treadmill, oh, kind of shadow boxing, <laughs> and I was like, okay, you feeling it? And he goes, good news. And I go, okay, who are we fighting? And he goes, Hendrix. And I start to samba. Oh. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, as, as competitors, we have so much respect for our opponent, but yes. that is the essence of what makes us tick. And I'm going to put myself in that category. Uh, although I, I don't get to lace them up and step inside the octagon, um, I'm fighting with these guys each and yes. every day. Uh, I, you know, God knows I pour my heart into my craft. And for the athletes that that have had, had the opportunity to work with me and I've been blessed enough to work with, there is such a mutual exchange of, of uh, emotional response and physical uh, connectedness with comes, when it comes to preparing to literally put your life on the line yeah. um, inside of the cage that I feel like I'm there as well and um, I'm more nervous than anyone. Really? Although we're ready. Uh, I, I firmly believe that the nerves that I feel when they're I they're the good nerves. 
it's yeah. it's the kind of nerves that you're just anxious for. You're just so excited for what's about to happen because with Kelvin and Uriah and Tony and Ashley Evan Smith yes. and, and you know Carla Esparza when I've had the chance to work with her uh, and the, the list goes on and on. You know former uh, former Ultimate Fighter champion Kendall Grove. When, you know when you work with those types of athletes, you just know that they have something explosive waiting to erupt yeah. out of them. You see it in training, you see the sacrifices weekly in nutrition and, mm -hmm. and, and this physical discomfort and developing skill in all their disciplines uh, when it comes to combat. The nerves come from the anxiousness to see what are they going to do next because mm -hmm. these guys are my brothers and sisters and they're each so wonderful and special and unique in their own way. So I get nervous because um, you're, Another you're excited. Potential yeah. inside, yeah. So when you are training them um, and getting them ready to kind of explode in the ring, um, what type of you know warm ups or workouts do they do? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, so in my program, we're a little. I believe that I'm a little bit unconventional than traditional strength and conditioning coaches. I don't have anything against that concept, but. Personally, I believe that that's a term that's a bit dated, and um, again, no knock. Um, so, I I emphasize specifically on energy output. So, because of that, there's a series of specific movements that we rehearse over and over again that have to be timed precisely, and that is kind of the nature of my program in a nutshell. It's a series of specific movements that are timed precisely that we rehearse over and over again. Uh, I don't ever get into too much detail about what they are, but they are designed to, to stimulate your biorhythmical patterns for speed, uh, to recruit um, your, and develop your sensory perception and your lung capacity. So my whole point of emphasis is to create and design programs that meet my athletes where they are. So they're, they're personalized. Very personalized and specific to each of their natural attributes and their natural uh, interest as a fighter. Or sometimes we manufacture a program that's unique for the, for the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, uh, we focus on their strengths, making them more efficient at what they do well, and, and making sure to overcome the inefficient patterns that they may have in their movement or conditioning or whatever it may be. So I believe that strength is great. You can be strong, Helen, but it isn't going to make you fight much better. Right? You, you can have wonderful condition and never get tired in the cage, but again, have no power. You may not have any ability to put that together in a tangible way to breed the result that you're looking for. So the performance component of what we do is uniquely and specifically designed to create an adaptative response within that athlete so that they can take everything that they want to accomplish inside the octagon and manifest it through their movement and through their willpower and, and just recalling all of those manufactured days and times of the duress and the physical uh, just all the things that they go through. I want to put them in a struggle each and every training session uh, in some way, shape, or form so that when it happens inside of the cage, um, it's home. Yeah, so they're, they're familiar with oh, yeah. that feeling. No surprises. There. But you have quite an impressive list or roster of you know athletes that you work with. Um, can anyone just be like, hey, John, you know, I, I'm looking for this coach and I would love to work with you. Like, can anyone just call you up or how does that work? Well, yes and no. Um, I do have an open door policy in terms of um, initiation or initially meeting someone, but there's a pretty, there's a pretty stringent kind of interview process that happens to make sure that we will be on one accord. Okay. And also making sure that I'm respecting the athletes that I do have a bond with because what you'll notice is most of the athletes that I have, they're, they're not in the same weight class. That is true, and, yes. And that is, that is strategic. Uh, some coaches have told me and some of my colleagues have said, hey, you're pigeonholing yourself. 
by not working with everybody who needs you and so forth and so on. But um, there's a term that I know that we all probably can hold dear to us is quality over quantity. That is true. Right. So each and every athlete that I'm blessed enough to work with, I call them brother or sister. And it is specifically because that is what we are. We are family. And I, I don't even consider myself most of their coaches, to be honest. I consider myself their training partners because I equally and mutually learn from them as, as they are world class in their skill. Yeah. And, and who am I to tell, you know, Tony Ferguson, who's this amazing athlete, that dude was athletic far before he ever met me. But I do have a unique skill set of knowledge and, 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 a, and I believe a program that kind of speaks to the nature of what they're looking to accomplish. So we just exchange information. That makes sense, right. and, and it's like a team effort. One hundred percent, which is why I'm so nervous when they fight. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're doing great though. Thank you. Thank yes, you. and for um, the athletes that do want to meet you and go through that process mm -hmm. of seeing if you know you guys could be teammates. Yes. Um, how could they contact you? You know, is it through social media, website? Mm -hmm. Social media is the new business card. Um, so I, I've actually taken all of my websites down, um, which I have a personal reason for that. Actually, someone stole my identity online. Oh, no. Literally copy and pasted my entire resume and, no. and advertised some of the accolades that I'd accomplished in my career as their own. And they're running their own personal... Catfish. Their own personal training business. Uh, so that that really preempted me to take take down like uh, my website, but I am on Yelp uh, now. Uh, after so many people have convinced me to do that, and social media, I'm on Instagram as Mr. Motivation Man. Um, on IG, on Twitter, I'm Jaywalk underscore Faster, and um, and my cell phone is public. You know, you guys can always contact me, and most of the agents who reach out to me call me directly on my cell phone. And on Facebook at, at John Walker Associates and I, we've just opened up a new performance center. It's called Motivate Performance. Um, please check us out on Instagram. It's Motivate Performance on IG. And we would love to bring you guys along with the family and, and check out our facility, which is state of the art. So we have a unique kind of hybrid facility. So Kratos is a gym that's specifically designed for strength and power. And where we're standing, which is literally just a couple steps away, <laughs> is all, it's, it's called the Motivate Performance Center. So we wanted to make sure that we could accommodate the, the full gambit of, of the athletic scope. Strength athletes, bodybuilders, uh, crossfitters, and also the people who want to be more explosive, more field related movers like NFL players, track and field, uh, mixed martial artists, and essentially everyone else that requires agility type training. So we have strength and power, which is our Kratos, the gym of the gods, and we have Motivate Performance Center, which is the black turf that you're standing on, which is designed for fast twitch movers and a lot more functional style of training. Remember, strength and conditioning they go hand in hand. And when you merge them together, that's when you get the performance, top level performance. And we're here in Nutrition Zone headquarters, which, uh, which are kind of the, the grandfathers of everything that we have here. So can we get a quick tour? Absolutely. Let's, cool. let's actually, I'm gonna start you by taking you over to our pro shop. Okay. Where, so most of our athletes come in and they have all of their nutrition needs met. And we're in wow. compliance with all of all of the NCAA rules, as well as uh, the, <laughs> what are they called, FIBA? Oh. Uh, what are they, the FIDA? I don't even know. The, F, the Drug Administration. <laughs> okay, you know? FDA. Well, we're good with FDA, but um, we, don't, we don't like to uh, give our athletes banned substances. How about that? So we play, we play fair here. <laughs> And also, this is our black turf where we have 30, 35 yards for, for sprint work, for our, uh, all of our speed training. And we have about a hair under 2,000 square feet of 
multilateral uh, space, functional space for all of our agility and bursting movements. Bah. Right? I'm gonna take you over to my man who motivates everyone. This is Kratos, commonly known as the god of war, but um, we've served dubbed him as the god of strength and power. And come on into the strength zone. So we got some strength athletes working right now. A big shot of Kratos, who's always watching over us. Kratos is there to make sure that we don't cheat our reps. Listen, trust me, if that dude is staring at you, you are not gonna cheat the set, I guarantee you. We got our Spartans, because we are warriors. And this is a place where we just have iron, stone, and rubber. And we forge ourselves physically and mentally in here. Our, our goal is to literally die daily and be reborn again. And that's what Love it. our environment is here. 